Okay, we are time for part two of the interview of a very interesting interview, and I actually learned a lot about you know the history of burlesque and the you know the area that you know I didn't know a lot about it, but you know I knew you know I knew a little, so I actually learned a lot. Um, now it's time for the personal side of it. Okay. How did you like start dancing, and then eventually? Um, how did you find your way into, into this art form? Okay, well, I studied theater in college. I grew up dancing and performing. I wanted to be a professional actress. So I studied theater, and after I graduated, I spent some time in New York auditioning and doing things like that, and actually came back to the area because I was burned out on living in the city and was ready to start my life, get married, start a family, which I did, and um, had a son home with my son and um, after being home for a little while I realized that I really needed to get back into a creative outlet, a performance outlet, and knew what burlesque was from my theater training. And I went to see actually a show at the Machunk Opera House. I went to see the Halloween themed show Burlesque and absolutely loved it. And part of the reason why I loved it and wanted to get involved in it is because neo burlesque, modern burlesque, involves and celebrates performers, women of all ages, shapes, and sizes. It's not just the classical, what do you think of the classical, beauteous, you know, beautiful showgirl. All different types are celebrated, and I thought that that was really fun and really unique and different. Part of another reason why I wanted to get into burlesque is because it's basically a DIY art form. You are self-directed as far as your inspirations, your concepts, characters that you might want to develop, uh, making your own costume, selecting music, all those different things. Because in Neo Burlesque, usually the performance is follows a joke or a storyline or about a, a fun character that you want to put up on stage. And it's wonderful to be able to see that from start to finish on your own and then finding a space that's comfortable and safe as far as a performance it really builds your confidence. Um, I've made unique friendships through burlesque. I've got to travel through burlesque. And all of that really excited and interests me as far as the possibilities of what you could do with an art form that was being revitalized, kind of turned into uh, a whole new art form. And that's how I first got into it. I did my first show and I got hooked. And I've been doing burlesque for about three years, three and a half years. OK. Now. You made an interesting point. It's more than just dancing. There's also acting involved. You have to, like, immerse, you know, if you're doing a character, immerse yourself in that character. So there's a lot more, it's a lot more complicated than what you see on the stage. Absolutely. Typically, a burlesque act is to one song. So you're about three to five minutes. So it's like doing a one act play in those three to five minutes with a character. Talk about a Cliff Notes version. Right. And a lot of modern burlesque involves um, sideshow or hula hooping, or there's some people that do aerial artist work or pole dancing. Um, there's a lot of different incorporations of different art forms into the performance art of burlesque, which keeps it fresh and exciting. Everybody kind of has a different perspective, but it's still considered burlesque. Okay. So. Now, if you don't mind me asking this, and feel free to not answer, but, um, you know, you said you're married, you have a son. How does, you know, how does this affect, you know, how do you balance, find the balance between the, between the travel for the burlesque and, you know, the amount of time it takes between that and your personal life and your family? Is it, it that has to be difficult at times also. Sometimes it's difficult. I'm very lucky in the fact that I have the support of my family and friends. They all understand what they what I do. They know that I'm a creative person and that uh, theater is something that I always wanted to make a life in. So they are very supportive when I need help if I'm traveling or if I need some time to work on something or develop something. It just becomes part of my everyday routine. Like other working parents have a daily routine of what they need to get done in a week or a month or a day. Um, I'm just like any other mom. I go to soccer practice and I pick my son up from school. It just so happens that I have a unique and interesting job. Uh, 
my husband and I are absolute best friends and partners, and I think what helps is that he sees how much time and effort I put into it, working behind the scenes, to try to make that three or five minute act successful. So because he sees that and understands that, um, when I have that burlesque persona, when I'm performing and I'm, I'm being buddy, he understands all the hard work that goes into that. And I think that helps him feel maybe less threatened than people would expect. Right. Now, does it, having their full support, does that also help at times where it's like, hey, look, you know, hey, look, you know, mom, hey, look, hon, you got to pull up, you got to pull the brakes. You're starting to get burned out because I know, like, even with my magazine, there are times where it's like, I don't realize that I need a break or that I'm starting to get burned out until the full, until I hit the wall. Right. So does that actually help? And do they actually kind of like say, hey, you know what? You did this before, why don't you try this? Did, did they actually help out a little bit in the, as far as the creativity goes? Um, I know it's a strange question, no, but... it's not a strange question at all. And the short answer to that would be no. Okay. Uh, for me, my creative process is very personal and kind of something that I take on myself as far as the actual doing. Okay. I don't really look for a lot of feedback directly from my family because most of the time when I'm with my family, I'm in family mode. Right. The fortunate thing about that is that there is a huge but closely knit burlesque network all over the country and all over the world. We all support each other through um, social mediums like Facebook and, and different sources like that. There's actually BurleyCon, which happens once a year in Seattle, which is a burlesque convention where People, that sounds interesting. Yeah, people from all over the world, artists come together for um, mostly classes and workshops and talking together about what's going on in the art form, where the direction of the art form is going. So that really helps in the times that you need, um, you need creative juice. Right. But also, it, it, it's good because you can commiserate with other performers. It's almost like an out. extended family. It is. It's very much an extended family. It's the most positive um, performance community I've ever been involved in as far as there's no ageism in burlesque, there's no issues, um, whatever gender identity you are is welcome, whatever size you are is welcome, whatever your background or walk in life is, you can find a home in this artistic community if you want to be a part of it. So the times when I get really burnt out or I'm like, you know what, I've had enough. I can hop on the computer and see something that a friend is doing or struggling with or go to YouTube and find a beautiful performance from somebody in Japan or in Australia or in, you know, Kalamazoo. Mm -hmm. And burlesque is happening and it, it really feeds that creativity. Sometimes you need to get out of your own head and see what the rest of the world is doing. Yeah, really helps. I, ha I have a friend who kind of like taught me that lesson this past Thursday where it was like, Without even trying, it was like I was starting to get really burned out and really exhausted and everything. And just spending a day with her and then her son, it was like, you know what? It just like, boom, it was the break thing. So yeah, it's... And the audiences are terrific. Um, what's really cool about the audience for Burlesque, and especially here in the Lehigh Valley, is that we have a variety of ages that come to Burlesque shows. We now we're talking 18 and up here though. Oh yes, absolutely, 18 and up or 21 and up right. depending on the venue. But we get young people, we get older couples, we get uh, women who want to have like a fun girls night out. It's uh, a really varied makeup of who the audience is. And burlesque is a fun and a confidence building art. And it not only builds your own confidence as a performer, but that shines through to the experience to everyone watching. You can really um, build fun moments, moments of openness, acceptance, confidence, um, sensuality with an audience of people that also have just as diverse backgrounds as us the performers do. And when that happens and when it's really good, you can make a fan of Berlin. Well, one, and also one feeds off the other, my correct where it's oh, like, absolutely. You create, you create, it's almost like what I call the band crowd energy loop with when I go review live music, right. where you create the energy, 
then all of a sudden the audience feeds off and they give it back to you and it's like that that loop where both sides have more fun and have an overall better experience, am I correct? Absolutely, because burlesque, while being an old art form, um, it's not like going to an opera or a play where you're watching the scene on stage and you're in the dark in theater and you're only, um, you feel like you can only respond and clap at the end of it. Burlesque is very different. Performers perform directly to their audience and look for interaction with audience members. So you can hoot and holler and clap and laugh and enjoy yourself as an audience member throughout the entire thing and feel like that you're you're part of what's happening and that that energy is transferring back and forth rather than you having to sit silently and, and passively and waiting for them to take their final bow right. for you to have any kind of reaction. Okay. Well, I think we've given enough of a uh, pardon the pun, and I know that this is a really bad joke, but I think we've given you know, everybody enough of a tease about this that, you know, pardon the word, but that I think it's, you know, enough to grab their attention and, you know, at least make them want to go out and check out the, the true art form. Absolutely. Um, like I told you, I always ask one question at the end, and this is basically just to help people out who... You know, I'm sure you get women there who, you know, who show, who come to shows that, you know, I might want, you know, yeah, this looks cool, you know, interesting, you know, other class, you know, other classes, um, I'd love to, you know, see if I might be interested in this. What advice would you give them? My advice to anyone um, who's interested in learning about burlesque more locally and burlesque as a whole is if you get on, you know, the computer and Google burlesque, you're going to get all kinds of information, but there are some really good resources. The New York School of Burlesque has a website. They have wonderful classes and resources. The Burlesque Hall of Fame in Las Vegas has a website. They have um, a network of classes and different events that are happening all over the country, as well as documenting the history of burlesque. Um, you can hop on Facebook or go to my website, which is bunnybedford.com, if you're looking for shows that are happening locally. And also, if you go to a show and you have questions, feel free to ask a performer afterwards. We're all about uh, creating an environment that is positive for our, as audience as much as it is positive for ourselves. Okay. So if people have questions and want to learn more, the best thing to do is ask, and I would say absolutely go for it, and it doesn't matter if your final goal is just to perform maybe for your partner or for your friends or if your goal is to get up on the stage under the lights and, and really um, perform your heart out there's something valuable that you can learn about yourself and share with others no matter what direction you take it in okay well thank you very much for your time and one final question I'll, this is one where i turn it around to myself okay i'm not afraid to take the critique you know as far as I can take it as well as I can, you know, what did you, overall, what did you think of the interview and the style? I thought it was really nice, really conversational and informal, which is good, and um, I thought that the questions you asked will really give people a really well-rounded idea okay. of what burlesque is and what's happening in the area. Um, you know, sometimes people, when they ask me questions, they nitpick where they get hung up on essentially, well, how they can do get, or, you know. Typical. Um, things like that, which yeah. people are curious about. I yeah, obviously. But I think you really are going to give your audience kind of a well-rounded look at it, and that's really cool. Okay, because if you think it sucks, just tell me. No. Uh, I don't I don't cut and edit, you know. No, it's, no, uh, no, You know, it's like I said, I can take, you know, if I can take, you know, take the critique as well as I can give it. So thank you very much for your time. And by the way, this is what one last thing. This is where you started here at the Allentown Brewers is where you first. Yep, the Allentown Brewers was, was the first venue in the Lehigh Valley that welcomed burlesque in their venues and, and their doors on a regular basis. Their staff has always been fantastic every time I've been here and the audience has always been terrific. I love it here and hope to do more burlesque here in the future. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time.